call. Hi everybody, good evening. My name is Zen Honeycutt and I'm the founding executive director of Moms Across America. Our mission is to educate and empower mothers and others with actions and solutions to create healthy communities together. And this is our Monday night Moms Connect call. We have the uh, just the delight of getting together with people from all across the country and sometimes around the world. We have somebody from Australia on today. We often have people from uh, Canada and maybe even Japan. And we have a special call tonight. Last week we featured for the first time, I think in depth on one of, on our Moms Connect calls of 5G, you know, electromagnetic fields and uh, energy coming from cell towers and most, most often cell phones. And we talked about the Stop 5G International of, of um, March that happened on Saturday. And I have some pictures that I just want to share real quick about that. Hang on a second. Um, so we've got, if you go to this 5G Global Protest Day, uh, you can see that there were, pro there were um, parades marches, not parades, marches all across the country and around the world. And um, it was really exciting to see so many people raising awareness about that. It was in 32 different countries around the world. And tonight we're gonna talk more about why this is happening and what we can do to protect our families um, from it. And we have Theodora, uh, am I saying your name, your name right, Scarato? Yeah. Great, from uh, Environmental Health Trust, and I'm showing her website right now, and she's going to, I'm going to say a little bit more about her, one second, and um, Theodora is the Executive Director of the Environmental Health Trust, EHT, which is a scientific think tank that publishes research, develops educational campaigns, and briefs policymakers on 5G and children's health. EHT scientists are among leading experts on wireless radiation. And um, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna mute a few people so we don't have background noise. Okay, and then I'm gonna finish up with her. Okay, um, so EHT scientists are among leading experts on wireless radiation and Scarato was instrumental in the Prince George's County school system move to address drinking water, uh, uh, drinking water lead contamination. So she's been working on many different areas and she has uh, presented at the National Institutes of Health, the University of California, San Francisco, the New Hampshire Commission on 5G, and she's coordinated several medical conferences on environmental health. So it really is um, a, a privilege and an honor to have you on with us today, Theodore, to give us your time. This is being recorded and we will share it with other people. So more than just the people who are on here tonight will be learning what you have to say and I'm sure they'll be sharing it with other people. So um, can we, can we, is there anything else that you want to say about your introduction, first of all? Is there anything you want to add? Um, well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm honored to be speaking with you. And I know, and I, I love this idea of having this call too. I think it's wonderful, uh, empowering community building. I think I might do it myself. So Great. <laughs> um, uh, our organization both publishes research. We coordinate different campaigns, educational campaigns, and we also educate policymakers. Um, and uh, we, you know, we have all, everyone working in environmental health has their hands full, and we've been focusing on technology and a more sustainable technology, but it's all part of the same situation that we have in terms of um, regulatory capture, so. Yes, regulatory capture, um, meaning that our corporations are controlling or influencing our government, our policies, our local policies, and that affects everything from food, which we mostly focus on, um, to health freedom, to, you know, drugs and all types of things that are our, our water, our air, everything that our kids are exposed to. And seeing as we're creating healthy communities, uh, we are collaborating with many different organizations to do this. And you know you cannot have a healthy community if you are experiencing electromagnetic fields at very high intensity um, from your next door neighbor's house, right? Because they've they allowed themselves to get under contract with Verizon or whomever to have a 5G cell tower on their house. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how that could happen, how we're going to stop it from happening, and 
um, and why that might happen. So can you first, for the people who are just joining us on the call, perhaps give us just a little bit about what is 5G and, and why, why should we be concerned about this? So 5G is fifth generation wireless. It's the latest technology that promises to tie together um, all the new smart things that industry is creating to sell us. Uh, smart refrigerators, self-driving cars, faster downloads. Um, however, what we're not being told, just like with phones, the first generation was just voice um, and it was analog. And then we had voice and text. And then we had voice text pictures. So now, and then voice text pictures and better video. Now we're at voice text pictures, better video, but super fast and many, many, many more objects connected. Can I share the screen for a minute to show you something? Yes, and as you're getting that photo, can I, can I just, or maybe you'll answer it with this photo. Mm -hmm. Do we really need faster? I mean, I can, I can stream you know, videos, I can Chromecast them to my TV, I can watch whatever, whatever I need right now. Why do we really need faster? Is it a, is it a money thing for that you said they're gonna be condensing, like are they trying to put everything under one uh, technology so then that like you're as you mentioned our home and our cars and our cell phones and our videos not can be run by the same company well um, depending on your carrier I, I mean we would say that we really don't need everything that they're saying that we must have so when you're in your house you have a technology you choose your provider and your, all your devices, generally, unless you're, you don't have an inside thing and you're only connecting to what's outside. So that's a network that's in your house, be it wireless or wired, that is in your house that you're connecting to. Mm -hmm. um, this is about being outside. The other thing, I should have mentioned this, it's about machine to machine communication. And the only way to have all of the machines operating is you just have a lot more information going invisibly through the air. Um, a lot of the things that they are saying that we need can be done in safer ways. So I want to start out with that. I'm not against technology. I use technology all the time, but there are safe, safer solutions and safe solutions to this. And if we just use technology in a more environmentally responsible and a more healthy way, we would not need to have all of this new, the, the 5G because there would be room for emergencies or whatever um, the, the critical use where the life-saving use where it could be needed. We also need to, of course, develop safer technology because what we have now is, is not safe. Um, so let me, can I, can you see what's on the screen? Yes, we can. 5G, millions of new cell antennas near homes and schools. Yeah. And, then, and then after she gets through this, Max, we'll, we'll come back to you. I saw your hand up. Cool. So I'll just tell you just a few things just for people who are new to it as well. Um, in order to, to have this new 5G, what industry is saying is that they need to have hundreds of thousands of new, uh, basically short cell towers across the United States. Estimates are, well, the FCC said 800,000 uh, they call them small cells. They've captured the word small cell, even though it's, it's not a small cell, but that is the word they're using rather than cell tower or cellular antenna. Mm -hmm. um, and we, of course, millions worldwide, and, and that's only in the next few years in the United States. So here's some examples of what we're talking about. The first picture was sent to us by someone who the, the, uh, this just went up in front of his um, apartment. So that, that is a cell antennas on a pole, and that's the top of it. So all your street lights, your utility poles, and if you have undergrounded uh, utilities, they are putting poles and they are big, wide metal poles that can hold all the weight because you have the antenna system. And then if you look on the, the right side, you can see all the electrical boxes there. That's all the equipment that goes along with the, the antenna. So there's not just the antenna, there's the equipment. Now sometimes the equipment can be undergrounded, but 
Companies don't like to do that. It costs money. They, they will argue many reasons why it's too damp, it's too this, that they can't do the undergrounded. Um, and then in the middle, when, when I was just in San Francisco and I looked out my window, um, there it was. There it was right on the street light. So they're replacing a lot of the street lights with these new blue uh, LED lights with blue light, which is a whole other subject, and um, putting the antennas. I wanted to just show you some examples of what they look like. So people are uh, getting organized on this around the world for many reasons. Uh, for my, me, understanding, my understanding was that they said something about having to place these every 500 feet. Is that true? Could be, could be more, it's closer. Every two to 10 homes, it really depends. In Washington, D.C., where there's test cities, across the United States and Washington DC is one and I was at the hearing and the companies, what they really want is to be able to put these wherever they want. Right. So they're changing the laws at every level, local, state, federal, to be able to not have people have any process in, in stopping it. So in DC, when they were talking about it, remember that it's every ca carrier gets to put their stuff where they want once the laws are set. So if you have Verizon on a pole, then you might have a Sprint or T-Mobile and they'll say, well, we want a pole. And they don't, like in DC, they don't wanna be together on a pole. They want to all have their own pole. So you can oh imagine how many antennas uh, and poles we might get. They're also going on buildings. And there's a community here, I don't have it in my slide set, but where it's just, it really is like every few homes. Every few homes. So it, is it a security issue why they want their own pole and their own cell? Is it like that's their property and that's their data and that's their customers and that's their information, that type of thing? They don't share, um, companies don't share the antennas. They might share a pole and then each have their own antenna, but they don't share, they don't, the, the electromagnetic radiation, you don't have like two carriers on one coming off one antenna. So what they said in DC is that their different frequencies would interrupt each other and they couldn't do it that way. However, in other communities, they are uh, together in different configurations, but every, Every carrier like Sprint or Verizon will have its own frequencies they're using, their own way they're creating the network and all their own uh, boxes, electrical boxes that they're And in. how many carriers are currently pushing out 5G? Is it at least three, right? Is it Verizon, AT&T and T-Mobile or are there more? Um, you know, I'd have to look into, well, all across the world, I guess we're talking in the United States, um, AT and T, Verizon. T oh, then there's Sprint, right? I mean, I don't know if they're pushing five G, but I'm just wondering how many different boxes might we be having, right? You know, that is why the way to address this is we have to slow down the build out um, because once one goes up, and once you have a site by law you can add more to a site. So um, although they might argue about that, they don't want someone else on their poll, but there are, there are companies, uh, Crown Castle is one of them, almost they're like a real estate agent in a way, I mean, uh, for the company. So they will have, they will maintain the poll and they will get the different carriers to come on the poll, those who want to be together. They're gonna be using all different frequencies, not just the high ones, the higher ones that we've never used before, but even the very um, low band frequencies, which go through walls and, and travel far. And then some companies are using, especially in the cities, higher millimeter wave frequencies that we've never used in mass deployment in this way on people before. Right, and the problem is that even the lower frequencies, there's been proven health risks um, from national health technology, I mean, not sorry, National Toxicology Program, right. uh, many other yeah, institutes. Can you talk to us a little bit about the, the health risks, why this should be concerning to us? Sure, I will, um, and I'll do it briefly. And cancer is just the tip of the iceberg. 
However, we have a lot of information on cancer scientifically as well as sperm damage and I'll talk about some other things, but a few things to know. So it's classified as a class 2B possible carcinogen by the World Health Organization in 2011. And that was because at that time they had uh, enough research in humans showing an association between people who use cell phones in the long term to a type of highly malignant and rare brain cancer, a glioblastoma. But only in the, the people who were over 10 years of use and considered heavy users, which was about 30 minutes a day, just under 30 minutes a day. Um, but they didn't have the animal research, um, extensive, uh, well-controlled animal studies, large scale, although there are literally um, uh, thousands of studies showing adverse effects at levels that are below, at levels that are legally allowed. So I just, I'm saying sort of a both and. As and a and where, where are those thousands of, of studies showing health effects? We have a on our, on our website. Uh, under 5G, there, um, if you hover over science, and I'll show you that, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about this and then I should go to my website because I um, mean, our website, we have a lot on our website and we're actually reformatting it to make it easier to navigate with so much information. But we'll, I can show you a few key resources that you can use as you take action on this. Um, but what happened is that the FDA asked for large scale animal studies. The US government did it, $30 million, uh, you know, years and years later, and they found clear evidence of cancer. With the same cell types, the same kind of tumors, um, not exactly the same because animals are not humans, but in the animals, as in the people who use cell phones for long term. So glioblastoma in humans and gliomas um, with the male rats, as well as uh, schwannomas of the heart, which is similar to a kind of tumor that develops in the hearing nerve. So when people hold the phone, this is on your, this is off, but to your ear, you're getting a lot of exposure um, into your brain and through your skull. So in the rats, they also develop, they develop clear evidence of cancer because the more the radiation, the higher the, um, the effect in the schwannomas of the heart. But I'm sure you've heard of the Ramazzini Institute. Yes. Uh, study. So they also did uh, research with, with rats, large scale using a much lower level of uh, radio frequency radiation, and they found the same tumors as the National Toxicology Program. Mm. So here we have um, the NTP, the National Toxicology Program, which was very carefully, uh, they made sure that the exposure was so carefully controlled on the animals. Well, there's no study that ever, $30 million, at least $5 million was just on building their housing to make sure there weren't other frequencies coming in, other radio frequencies coming in. And then there was also a Jacobs University study. Um, and there's many more studies. I just wanted to point these out because as with all toxins, it's the synergistic effects. It's the combined exposures that we're exposed to every day. You know, what, what will that, what will the effect of that be? Well, with this study, which was a replication study, they found that the radio frequency, which is wireless frequencies, in combination with a known carcinogen, um, showed a much more significant rise in the tumors in the exposed animals. And by known carcinogens, you could it, you, that could mean something like smoking or um, toxins, environmental toxins, flame retardant, fire type, things like that. Is that what you mean by other known carcinogens? In this study, that's not what they used um, specifically. Um, they used an injection of nit uh, nitrusia. Uh, um, I'd have to pull it up right now, but it was, um, they knew that they would be getting uh, tumors 
And it was a proven carcinogen, whatever else the other, the, the other pollutant was. Okay, got it. Shot. Yes, and the other thing is, so the Ramazzini Institute, so let me talk about this study. The, the levels that they used of exposure on the radio frequency were very low, very low in terms of comparable to what humans now, are. Now by low, do you mean not often exposed or do you mean the cell phone was held very far away? I mean, are we talking about cell phones right up against rats or are we talking about them in the room? I mean, cause what we're talking about here is cell towers that are gonna be at least 25 feet away from our house. Now, some people might think, well, 25 feet away, it's not that bad. I mean, I can I feel the phone hurt my head when it's like this, but not when it's like this. So, well, this the study on the National Toxicology Program study really challenged the animals to really see, but they made sure that they weren't overheated because the way our government has set its limits is if it's heating, it's harmful. And they set a limit based on uh, heat, that there's a certain amount of heat and heating is the only harm, or generally speaking, it's heating. So they made sure with the NIH study, the National Toxicology Program, that there was not heating to the degree that is considered uh, overheating by the researchers who set our limits way back 20 years ago when the EPA was defunded from actually setting proper safety limits. Um, and that study, the NTP, really did look at if like when your phone is near your body to get full body to that intense level. The Ramazzini Institute looked at um, the limits for antennas that we, the allowable that the US government allows, mm -hmm. levels of radiation, and had levels that were lower than that in their study. The Jacobs University study um, went quite low in terms of even lower levels. And to throw it all uh, into more into the mix, there is a body of research showing impacts to the blood brain barrier at much lower levels. So the blood brain barrier protects your brain from toxins which are circulating from getting into your brain. And so I just want to get clear again, does low levels mean the amount of radio waves, like how often, or does it mean distance away? I'm not going to use distance. It's the amount, the, 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 the intensity. Okay. Which okay. corresponds to the amount that we absorb. Right, which is a problem because with 5G, it will be much more. The intensity will be much more because these towers are now outside of our homes instead of, you know, like a, a, a couple miles away. Is that is that one of the main? That's right. Okay. So I want to. Yeah. When research okay, so I want to touch on the. Um, what side effects people might see. And then I wanna get into, a, a lot of people wanna know how we can protect our family. So I wanna make sure we have plenty of time to talk about that. Okay. What, what side effects might we see um, you know, in our family members if they were being affected by, by uh, 5G or EMFs? Well, because of the multiple ways, I mean, our entire bodies are exposed. There's actually many impacts that have been found in research. So I'll go over them. Impacts to sperm, um, uh, impacts to um, even in ovaries of animals. There was a study by um, Hugh Taylor, who's uh, Dr. Hugh Taylor, chief of obstetrics at Yale Medicine. He took animals and exposed them. He, he took pregnant mice and exposed them prenatally. I'm sorry. I had four hours of sleep last night because I was just traveling. Uh, this is like my fourth talk in like three days. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. So he took pregnant mice and exposed them to cell phone radiation and then tested the animals later when the babies were born and uh, found damaged memory and increased hyperactivity and altered brains in the way that the animals um, their brain function. So there's a lot of, and this is what kind of got me interested in it was the impact to the brain, neurological potential impacts. I know that more acutely, um, oh, I should talk about memory damage. There is replicated research showing memory damage from cell phone radiation. Now, when you have 
a phone to your head that is different than a tower because you're gonna have a very intense exposure near where the device is to your body. When you have a tower and towers closer than they've ever been before, which is what 5G is going to mean, the research that's looked at the deployment of small cells, and we have this on our website, has found you're gonna elevate the overall ambient levels kind of in outside, you know, coming through your window, if they're the, the uh, lower bands, the, in your yard, wherever you go, elevating everything up. And that's full body exposure that you can't turn off. So we can turn off our phones, but we can't turn this off at night. There's, um, I have, we have a playlist, maybe I'll show you on our, um, on our, uh, on our website, we have a playlist where when a family in Sacramento had a small cell put outside the window and it was in the daughter's bedroom, very high levels, they became sick and kind of like a breakdown of their immune system is what it seemed to me from the testimony. Um, and I don't know, this family didn't know anything about wireless or cell phone radiation until the kids became sick and they were not getting better at all after weeks and weeks. And you can watch a lot of this testimony online, and I particularly have hers. I just need to figure out how to unshare here. Yeah, that's what one of my assistants for Moms Across America said. She moved to a place to get away from a homeowners association where they were spraying Roundup. They moved to a different place and didn't realize that they had a cell phone tower right nearby. And her kids have been sick for months on end with you know colds and runny noses, like their immune systems just to seem to be constantly broken down. And she thinks it's the cell tower. So now they're moving again. <laughs> it's, right. Well, yeah. the research that's looked at oxidative stress has been I, I mean, over 90% of the studies, there was a review that showed, have shown an effect. So when you have an increase in oxidative stress in the body that can impact all aspects of your overall health in a myriad of ways, a breakdown, right your resilience. There's also impacts to sleep. Sleep's when you heal, sleep's when you, your body recovers. The, the NTP study, actually, if you go to the website of the National Toxicology Program, maybe I will show you that, actually. Let me, let me do it. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna get the desktop up and I'm gonna sort of navigate. Um, okay, so the National Toxicology Program found, not only did they find cancer, but they did tests on the rats and mice. And um, after 14 or 19 weeks when they were quite young, and they found DNA damage, which uh, when you talk about this to folks who don't know much about it, they'll say, well, non-ionizing radiation can't cause DNA damage. What are you talking about? What, what's going on here? Um, that's not possible. Yet there have actually been several studies that have shown impacts to, D to DNA going back a few decades. Now, the scientists are discussing, well, does it impact your DNA repair? So you can't repair after that damage that happens day in and day out from all the toxins that we're exposed to every day. Um, but regardless, there was, a, there was an increase. So that's what counts, you know, how it happened um, is uh, being deeply discussed by researchers, but there is absolutely um, an association in several studies. Okay. So, All right. So we got it. This is something that we want to avoid. So can you start talking to us about what we can do to protect our families? What are some steps that we want to take? Okay. So I see it as a three-part three parts to this. First is being aware so you have enough information um, to take the next step, which is starting a conversation in your community. I really believe that we have to get involved in this, just like you're involved with um, Roundup, because if there's not a conversation happening, it's time to start one. Going to your local town, your city council, um, finding out who your elected officials and talking to them. The first step in your local community, like what I started to do is one, where are the current antennas 
and where are the antennas being proposed? You have to find that out and then find out the process that the companies are going through to get it up. What's, what's with your process? So for example, in, I'm in Maryland and unlike there's over 20 states that have state laws that basically streamline companies' ability to put the small cells in to your, in your right of way, like in front of the home where they have all the other utilities. And in, your, in those states where you have streamlining bills, state streamlining bills, it's gonna be a little more challenging, uh, a lot more challenging actually, than where I am in Maryland, where they keep trying to have the streamlining bill and people have been organizing packing calls, talking to their elected officials, so much so that our elected officials are testifying for the state bill um, on this issue. So you wanna see what the laws you have at the state level and then at the local level. So I wanted to, um, I'm still sharing right now. So let me go to the 5G page. And I want to show you, we have a lot of information, but some really critical pieces. Um, one is, and by the way, so I clicked on, I went to key issues and I went down to 5G. This page is very important, published research. I'm not going to click on it, but this is where you can get, we have, very, when people say there's no research, you can just, you know, cut and paste that whole thing and send it to your elected officials. And we also have other resources to send as well. And 5G Crisis has shared their toolkit, which is just absolutely critical that you have- yeah, 5G toolkit. Crisis, yes. That's where I went to get a letter from my neighbors. I printed out 40 copies the day before the parade, and I mean, the March, the Stop 5G March, and walked around to my neighbors. I got to talk to a few of them. And um, I did it just before people came home from work so they would see it you know, when they came home from work, I got to talk to a few of them and they were really annoyed. And one of the things that they were most annoyed about was that um, this new possible OTARD rule over the air reception device where your neighbor could get 5G installed on their house and you would have no say so about it. And in addition to the possible health factor, because everybody's skeptical about health, you know, they're, they're like, yeah, everybody think, well, you know, soda is harmful, right? Like, they're like, yeah, I don't really know about that. But what they really also did not like was the fact that that 5G cell tower, if they have um, a home security system, that's a smart home security system, that that could be a potential, like that people could hack in through that. It could be a privacy and a security issue. And so they were really annoyed by that. And it, that raised some eyebrows as well. So um, it's, it's very easy to strike up a conversation when you have just a few points to talk about and you only want a few anyway, right? You only yeah. really address one or two anyway. You don't want to stand there talking for 20 minutes with no, really no permission to lecture them. So you just want to bring up a few things and hand them the letter and, and then ask them to, would you say, contact your city council or your planning department and tell them that they're concerned about it? What would you say is the call to action in their community? Well, Many hands make light work. I mean, I think the first thing is to find out what your situation is. You have to know the process and, and the laws that are sort of where you are right now, because your city, for example, might have already passed an ordinance about the antennas, allowing them in without you having a way to stop it or to have any kind of hearing. So you need to find out what's going on first. In your community. Yeah. In, in my town, they said, we have no current plans to have 5G. Like there's, I asked, what are the addresses in which oh. the, the cell towers are going yeah. to be installed? And they said, we have no current plans. So is that cryptic? For, should I be asking in a different way? Yes, I would, I would actually, even though you're going to hear a lot of talk about 5G from industry, talk about small cells and, and what's called wireless facilities. So what the companies are doing is they're talking all about 5G and then they're pushing uh, different kinds of regulations which are talking about wireless facilities, which are small cells, because actually it's not just about 5G, it's about 4G densification. So 
right. 5G relies- and with, Yeah, what that means is that they're going to use 5G on the backs of 4G and it increase right. the density of the waves. Yeah, so, yeah. but yeah, I just want people to be clear about that. It's just not just 5G. Thank you. 4G is the backbone for 5G. Okay. So what they have to do is they have to put up densify 5G and then they can just pop on their 5G antennas as they get that figured out because we don't have 5G phones, right? They're, they're coming out and they cost like over $1,000. And every phone, when the phones do come out, will have not just 5G in it, it will have 4G antennas as well, multiple antennas and 5G. And you might be in a 5G area and it'll use the 5G antenna because that's what works best in that area. And then you'll move to another, you know, down the road a little bit and it'll go to 4G. It'll toggle back and forth, but we've never had this much 4G uh, as they're trying to build out. So ask about the small cell if they have an ordinance in okay. place. And I want to make sure you know one of the most important things that I find policymakers who sometimes um, and need some courage to be working on this issue. But what really helps people is to see what other communities have done, of course. So um, we have on our website, and I know that 5G crisis and also Physicians for Safe Technology is another critical research at, uh, resource, MD Safe Tech. So Los Altos has uh, prohibits the installation of small cells, which are not small, but that's the words that's often used, on the utility easements in residential neighborhoods. They have setbacks um, in multifamily residences. They have separation from schools, which is absolutely um, like not many communities have that, although we're all calling for that. A separation between the nodes, meaning the, the poles, because you ask, well, how many will there be and how far apart will they be? Well, if you don't say it, you don't have an ordinance in your town, then then there's no law that would stop him from having, like in our town, some areas, we have like several utility poles all together because one went up and then the other one went up and then they move the cable. Yeah, I don't know if you have that in yours. Like we have sometimes three together. Two of them are like half there, but they're still holding up some kind of equipment. Um, so, so, so hang on, are you saying that we should preemptively um, ask a city council member to file an ordinance to state that if any um, uh, wireless facilities or small cells were to go in, they should be at least whatever, thousand feet apart or what, are you saying preemptively we should do that? Well, actually what the FCC, yes, and it should have been done before now today. Yes, right, actually. yeah. Because if you don't have something in place, then as you go higher up in government, they are gonna tell you what you can and can't do. Okay, so that's a good question. We can ask what, is, what does the ordinance look like for wireless facilities? Do we have, the first question is, because we're talking to moms all over America, do you yeah. have an ordinance in your locality? And it might mean that there's a- An ordinance on what? What is the wording that we wanna use? Wireless facilities. Okay. All right, and that's, we go to our we go to our planning department or our city council and we ask them, do you have an ordinance on wireless facilities? That's the first question. Can I see it, right? What is it? If you have one that's a problem, meaning that really allows these to be wherever, like with uh, you know a setback of say 30 feet from a building, which is what, let me just tell you the story of what they're trying to do here in Montgomery County. Okay, sure. They are trying to pass, a, it's a zoning, similar, which is different, but they're trying to pass this zoning amendment um, that would allow the antennas within 30 feet of homes. And every street light, every utility pole can go up higher and be a potential site. Mm -hmm. But they are removing the public process for um, after, so they have their setback, and as long as that setback's met, there's no public process. There's no- And by they, you mean this is, the, this is the telecom industry. This is what they are trying to do. This is, well, I'm sure that that's what they want. We have some council people that are putting it forward, but we have a heavy industry influence, we believe, 
in two okay. weeks. I just want to make sure we, we, we clarify when we talk they, it's not the advocates or the activists, it's the, the industry. Yes, that is pushing for re basically removing our ability to have a hearing. Because what we had before, before all this build out is for large cell towers, when they had to go up, there would often be a hearing and community members could come and, you know, say they didn't want it for aesthetics or for whatever reason um, that, you know, it, it made noise. Uh, there's a diesel gas tank, you know, in the cell towers. Um, but that is not, industry is trying to make it so we don't have all these hearings. I mean, people are in the way of the rollout of these towers. And when you're trying to put mini cell towers near homes, people are really waking up to this whole issue and saying, wait a minute, for not for the radiation or what you're talking about, the, um, the security and privacy issues. Also the big ugly electrical things that are gonna be in your front yard potentially. So on ordinance in our community, they would allow 12 feet, 12 cubic feet electrical boxes per antenna. So we could get a couple, we could get like three Refrigerator. 12, hang on a second, a 12 foot wide electrical box? 12 cubic feet. Okay. Per antenna. Previous to that, it was um, 28 cubic feet, but people were really protesting. So now the new proposal is 12 cubic feet, but you can have, at least according to the current proposed, industry proposed uh, regulation, you could have several little mini refrigerators in your front yard. Yeah, and this is this is also because you've got Verizon, Sprint, all the, all these different antennas, all these different companies have different antennas and then they all need electrical boxes, is that right? Yeah, generally. Um, there's some, in, in residential areas, that's what we're seeing. Sometimes they can kind of smush it all up and put it in the, it's called like a shroud, like in DC, so you get like this, thick bottom and it's all sort of in there. Right. But I think it costs industry more money to do that. So they just prefer to have their boxes and not have it all inside and looking pretty. Interesting. So Frankie <laughs> said, I already asked this of our two officials, which was the about, uh, do you have an ordinance on the wireless facilities? And she was told we can't control whether we do or don't have 5G controls or limitations on density. Wait, Is that true that the officials in a town can't control this? Well, we believe that officials can have some authority. You want to find out what authorities you have based on the laws, the local laws, the county laws, the state laws, and then there's the federal laws because the FCC has been stripping the authority of local communities um, at the federal level. But I don't know what state, let me, um, what state um, that you're in, but if you have a state streamlining bill that has been passed and over 20 states have that, then it is true that your ability to do anything is quite limited. However, there is still a lot that you can do. Yeah, so they, they, um, they tried to pass that bill in California, I believe, and it was, it was squashed. Do you, are you familiar yes, with that? That was SB 649. We have a whole yes. web page on that with pictures of all the protests. And what happened is it passed, um, but then the governor didn't sign it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was, it was turned down. Okay. okay. And that was from, yes, it was. And that was from massive. And that's why the grassroots going door to door, educating your neighbors, starting that conversation, when there are a lot of people, elected officials need to listen. And so important. Yes. Yeah. So um, we were talking to Alex Crone from Santa Rosa last week, and he said what he did was he found out through a public request what the addresses were that were destined to um, be the cell tower locations. And some of them were homes or businesses in their community. And they got a group of people and went door to door and educated those people so that they would then refuse to have the cell tower installed on their homes or that building. Mm -hmm. So if there is already a designated addresses, that is something that you must and need to, need to do in order to protect your community. You need, we, it's, it's, nobody else is gonna do this for us. We need to be the ones to go 
talk to those people, right? So I would think, yeah. I would think starting, if there isn't already a, like a Facebook group, right? Or some type of social media group or someone meetup group for your town to stop 5G, I would think that would be an important step is to start one, wouldn't it? To connect with people in your local community? Absolutely. We need to, so every city can have a stop 5G or you can name it, you know, responsible technology, healthy tech, you know, whatever you want to name your group. Yeah. Every city, every state, um, we have like a local, all our towns have groups that have been growing and we have um, a county group and we're probably going to have a, st a Maryland state group. We sort of have it. We haven't been official about it. We've been a coalition mm -hmm. um, and that's critically important to begin um, the process so that you have people educating, talking about it. And also one of the things you can ask for um, is full transparency. So something that parents are doing and that we've done is public information requests to find out when a, where are the applications? What do the applications say? What kind of antennas? Now, if you're hearing this and you're like, antenna, like what, what would I do with an app? What does that even mean? We've all been there. Like, you know, I, I cannot believe I know as much about telecommunications as I do know, but you'll get all the permitting in the application and you can see the antennas. It shows uh, the, the waveform, the frequencies, what, what's being used. And you also can find out as you're talking about um, Mr. Crone talk, sharing that information with you, like we found the list of the proposed over the next three years antennas in the community. The other thing that we found out was um, and pressured for was to actually have an interactive map online for people. You can call for transparency on this. Like, why are you having to do a, P, a public information request to find out about antennas going in your town? Right. Why isn't your town, your community putting that up? Why wouldn't they be public about it? If they're so proud of it, why not show it? Or <laughs> just like Gmos, why not label it, right? And you can do that, by the way. You can get the addresses and put them on an Excel spreadsheet and upload it to Batch Geo for free. And you can make a map of your town with those addresses. It's really easy to do. Yeah. Oh, that's great. What's the name of that? Batch Geo, B-A-T-C-H-G-E-O. I mean, I, I haven't done it lately, but I'm assuming that company is still around. I did it years ago when we found glyphosate in breast milk and in tap water and urine. I just uploaded the zip codes of the areas where we found it and put it on a map and it's an interactive map. You can then click on it and see the amounts or the levels or, or whatever. Yeah. So there's, and Google maps I'm sure has that, but I would imagine they might start censoring that type of information. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's yeah. Well, we, with all the pushing that happened here, maybe they use that. They use some technology and now they have an interactive map. And yes. one, so Anne is saying Cell Mapper is um, another one, cellmapper.net. Um, we only have like 10 minutes left. So I want to ask, um, Caitlin is talking about, well, before I get into Caitlin's question, um, which is what I shall say, Caitlin's asking, are there any products that we should be using to help in the immediate minimum, to, to minimize our immediate exposure, like to just to regular EMFs? And I, I want to say, we really wanted to focus this call on how to stop 5G, not how to live with it, because we don't know of any products right now, unless Theodore, you know of any, that can actually um, remove or eliminate the harm from 5G completely. We, we do, I don't know of any. I know we know of some from EMFs that can minimize it, but my understanding is that many of the products can minimize um, harm to the ones that are below one megahertz. Is that correct? But they're the products that may not help over one megahertz. Is that correct? Well, actually, um, 5G is gonna use all the frequencies we have now, including the lower frequencies that go through everything. I just wanna, depending right, on- but it also uses higher levels, which have never been used before. Higher ones and the higher ones will not go necessarily through your building walls. What they're gonna do is um, 
have some way of bringing it in or have a router or they actually have an apparatus they put up to the window. I don't want to get sidetracked on that because I want to go back to what you said, which was so important. How to protect yourself is to get active and to halt and slow down the rollout. Because even if, and I could talk about, and we have online, you know, how to reduce exposure in your home and make your home safer with EMFs, which is critically important. Please go and watch my webinars that I have on that. But you won't be able to stop when you walk outside that exposure. Um, and because we're gonna be having even lower frequencies using it, it, it will be going through your house, the city, the library, the community, schools, they're testing 5G in schools. Um, and so slowing down the rollout, halting the rollout with person power is, is really the call to action. And at the same time, as I've done in my home, you know, get educated, go onto our website and um, watch. Also, we have a play on uh, YouTube. I have webinars. You can go under my playlist and I have webinars on how to reduce EMF in your home and learn about that. But well, I want to mention a few of those. And I, I had a conversation with, with Ryan today from, um, uh, sorry, from uh, EMF Harmony. Hi, Ryan, I unmuted you. And I just want to mention that he said something which really got open my eyes, which was that um, even though I thought I was doing good by putting my cell phone on airplane mode before I went to sleep, but I would plug it in and charge it right by my bed. Brian, can you tell us the numbers around why that's not a good thing? Sure. So the actual power cord has no shielding or grounding. So the actual cord itself is going to be giving off dirty electricity. And what are the numbers? You gave me some numbers. What are those? Yeah. So any, anywhere between one to two milligauss is going to be a safe zone and as the farther away you get from that cord, the better the, the frequency readings are. Uh, unfortunately, the cord itself, since there's no shielding or grounding, is somewhere between seven or eight milligauss. And that is really heavy, a really heavy frequency to have next to your side of the bed when you want to try to sleep. Yeah, so I did, I did not like that. He talked also about how extenders uh, my husband put an extender for our wi-fi in the attic and in a closet and he said that those um push out 2000 microwatts did you say and what's considered safe is around 30 is, is that correct that's correct yeah so so we we may not know that right now there's things that you can do in your home like for instance turn off the extenders or um, get grounding wires for your computers, right? My sons have a gaming computer in their, um, in the man cave, in the garage. And how much did you say that that puts out? Oh, the gaming device? Yeah. If it's accessing the internet, it's going to be well over 2000 microwatts per square meter. Yeah. And, and you know, our kids are accessing the internet because they're playing with their friends across the country you know, Terraria or Minecraft or whatever, and they're talking to each other. So they're exposing themselves to thousands of times more than what is safe of EMFs. I did not know that. So my husband's buying, what do you buy for that for a, a, a cord to get, to ground it? Just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get a, um, a, a timing device, like a, like a Christmas tree light timer. A Christmas tree? Just finished tree up Christmas. Timer. So just get yourself a, six or seven dollar christmas tree light timer and that will that'll shut it off late at night okay but what is the what is the cord that you hook to it it's like to ground it so it's the what is that called you mean the cord, the cord that you what i'm sorry the cord where you make the internet go straight into the computer rather than using the wi-fi ethernet. oh ethernet yeah ethernet cord okay thank ethernet. you yeah and make sure the ethernet cord is shielded as well yeah It'll oh be better. okay Shielded, okay. A shielded but, Ethernet cord. You, you can also make sure that the game, so gaming consoles are radiating even when you're not using them. Um, several of them that we've tested. I haven't tested any of the more recent ones, but even when you're not gaming, the consoles are like 
uh, a mini Wi-Fi router. Well, not really mini, but they're like a Wi-Fi router and they're always emanating, just like your home cordless phone is actually emanating uh, radio frequency, cell phone radiation as well. The, the home corded phone, cordless phone, so you wanna get a phone with a curly cord for the majority of your voice calls. I have one that I have through my internet provider. Um, a cord with a curly, like the curly, the I'm old fashioned not. ones. What? <laughs> the old those old fashioned ones back in the day when we had the phone connected to the wall with oh, the yeah. curly cord, I like those. A long fifty foot cord. I'm washing the dishes on the phone. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yes. I, and I, what does that connect to? <laughs> oh, it connects to the. So this is actually a pro. You did, we just jumped into a whole process, but you. <laughs> Your, your modem, your router modem that brings you in your internet will have a place where you can connect the ethernet to con like my laptop right now is connected with a wire, mm -hmm. the ethernet. Okay. And then I also pay extra because I can't get a copper landline because the companies have, um, you know, don't allow a copper landline here, which is really should be illegal. And that there's a whole lawsuit going on about that. So I have, I pay extra to have my modem uh, have a landline off of it. So the telephone used to just go into the wall, into the plug, but now the line runs from the, the, mo the modem router. Okay, so your laptop is directly hooked up. You don't have, do you not need to have a Wi-Fi router then? Or you have the router, it's just hooked up directly? I do not have a Wi-Fi router at all. We replaced our modem router with a non-wireless one. There are a lot of options for people. You can, um, because the one that comes with your service, it often just automatically has wireless and it's radiating all the time, even when you're not, you know, using the internet. So it might be like, like it was for me, right at the computer, along with your cordless phone, that's, you're receiving all that radiation, even if you're not using any device. When you're using a device, then it's even more because they're having a conversation. Yeah, so, I saw a video with the same thing. I know this is different, slightly different topic, but the same thing with the earbuds, those AirPod, um, iPhone earbud things. Mm -hmm. is, are you shaking your head, Ryan? No, this is not correct, but- No, no, no. those are horrible. So he showed a thing where it showed that even when the phone wasn't on, it was radiating. Yep. Is that true? Yeah. They all, wireless devices are always searching for their little friends. Like if you have a phone- yes. Yeah, it's yeah. all in the Bluetooth is, and you have the Bluetooth antenna on and then you have Bluetooth devices. They're all connecting going, hey, I'm here. You know how when you turn on and you say what Wi-Fi, what Wi-Fi uh, networks are around and you get like yeah. however many you get, the way you get it is they're having a conversation. The, the devices are having, a, are sending information to each other so they all know each other is there. Mm. They're just ready. They're and when you want to connect, they're like, oh, they're let's go. Right. You know, right. um, so like uh, your phone is always radiating even if you're not using it, which is why, you know, apps are upload, you know. Which is why it's better to turn it off than airplane mode or no? Well, I generally turn mine off, but you put it on airplane mode, but with a newer phone, you have to make sure that all the antennas are off. Is the Bluetooth off? Is the Wi-Fi wi off? You have to kind of go through, every phone model is different. Okay. Um, and I found it really important to have a meter. If you can get a meter, not the cheapest meter, um, but go a little bit up so that you can know what's going on. That was very helpful to me because I could measure. Yeah. And so my friend did use a meter and, um, she, she's a single mom. She lives alone, but she was concerned about this. And the meter was really high right around her bed. For some reason, that part of the wall of her house had really high EMF. So what she did was she hired some day workers because she didn't have anybody else to help her with this. And she put up um, aluminum screening on the walls and they plastered it on the wall and, and made it like they were spackling, you know, wall, um, like a new sheetrock, right? And they spackled this aluminum screening over around her you know bed in her bedroom and then repainted it and it you can't even tell that it's there and then she checked it again and it was completely like not even showing up anymore so, 
reflected it. There are some people that are dealing with their houses, bringing in building biologists or experts who work on remediating and trying to, you know, really remove as much as possible in high radio frequency areas. But once you step outside, there you are. So, I mean, I yeah, have- yeah. So the, Again, the point is we've got to stop it. So there are things I appreciate people want to know, what can we do in our homes to protect our homes? Because there are, there are EMF problems right now. If it, it, I just had a lovely conversation with Ryan from EMF Harmony. You can check his stuff out. There are a lot of different companies, though. I just want to say Moms Across America is not endorsing any, you know, one particular product. But what some of our friends here have mentioned is Safe Sleeve and Defender Shield and Hara Pads. I don't know anything about these. I actually do. I I, I would say this. I, when, when I shield. You can shield houses and rooms when you have experts who are helping measuring to make sure, like if you shield yourself, which you have to be careful about with a big shield, for example, in your wall, which I did in this particular wall, I'm actually in the middle of moving. So I'm in not my house, I'm in my old house right now. Cause I'm, anyway, um, you have to be careful. You're not actually bouncing another antenna that's over there that you are not aware of back and causing a problem. You also have to be careful that you don't bring wireless devices into a space that you've so carefully shielded. So you got to get educated on this issue. Oh, because it could bounce back and forth is what you're saying? It could intensify? Yeah. yeah. If you shield a whole area, because, you know, personally, you, you, oh, I just put the shields up, but you don't have a meter and you don't know what's going on. And then you go in with your phone or with a device, then you're, you're bringing it inside and it's contained in there. Hot and, boxing. What do you call it, Brian? Hot boxing. Yeah. Hot boxing. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. In other words, get a professional. It really is worth it to talk to a professional, have them come to your home. And that's why policy change is so important because some of us can go to professionals and most of us can't. Right. And, and it's a whole process. Um, and I, ha I wanted to just put this up on the screen. So I have all of these um, videos and one of them is how to reduce exposure in your home, just learning more. Um, I have, I think it's that my holistic moms one was really good. It was really for moms about, you know, what they can do at home. So get educated on this and you're going to wrap your mind around it, understand the issues and it'll be much, it'll be much easier to, to navigate because it really is, um, it's simple. It's just like any other environmental issue, but it gets a little complicated with the radiation as you think about what you need to do in your home. But okay, first, so we, yeah. have, we have a question from Eileen. I'm sorry to stop you, but I wanna make sure we get to it before we have to go. She wanted to know which meter. Do you recommend a certain meter or are you not, are you not recommending products? Um, I'm not gonna recommend a particular product, but I mean, I, I have, um, I, Safe Living Technologies has a new um, safe and sound, they don't have it in here with me, an acoustometer something that has lights on it that you can see, but if they are the particular, if they're, if, so that, that's what I use just as a general consumer. What's it called, acoustometer? Oh, on the, the I, and I'm not, I don't have a financial relationship with them. The right. acoustometer, um, they're building biologists and remediators would have much higher level meter, meters, which are more exact, but those are, it's useful to have a meter where the, you, the mom, the parent, can walk around your house with to just yeah I have one too I'm sorry I didn't I don't have it here to show right now mine is black and with orange buttons and we got it on Amazon and I don't remember what it's called but it does show it does show the um yeah I get sometimes concerned when they have like high medium low yeah no this has actual numbers is that what you want you want actual numbers right I do I like numbers yeah. because then you can see like when it goes up and when it goes down and that's really helpful because as you go closer to it, it's going to go up farther away. And sometimes you're going to find things in your house. You're like, wait, that radiates? I didn't know that. And you yes. can like- Even things that are off, right? <laughs> Outlets and different, different things that right. radiate. Yeah. Right. So when somebody asked, are, do Tesla cars have higher electro EMFs? Do there are two else? kinds of, well, really three kinds I talk about, which are uh, extremely low frequency fields, like from the electricity, which in Tesla cars, and you have a different kind of meter for that, that measures milligauss um, or electric fields, but there is uh, extremely low frequency fields in Tesla cars, as well as from the antennas 
Um, are they higher than what is in a regular car with digital wiring? I would imagine I've regular. I've a lot of cars and there's all kinds of numbers depending on the cars. The issue with the battery is magnetic fields. I know that Tesla's aware of this because as I understand it, the last model that they came out with has a little bit lower. I saw a report about BMW where they were talking about how can they reduce the extremely low frequency fields in their cars. So the manufacturers are aware, but they have a lot of work to do. So it's good to take measurements of the car and even decide what side of the back seat to have your child in, depending on the measurements in terms of the milligauss, which are the extremely low frequency fields. Very and I actually and can those extremely low frequency fields be picked up on by those meters that you're talking about that you can buy? Meter. There are different meters for different frequencies, actually. This would be um, from a magnetic field meter. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Zen, can yes. I just ask a quick question? And I'm sure there's probably other people. My entire house right now is wireless. All my TVs are wireless and my, my two laptops are wireless. How difficult is it to call up, uh, I'm with Sprint right now, I mean Spectrum, how is it difficult is it to call them up and say, I want you to come in here and I want this whole house wired. There are wires running through this house. This house was built in 54. So the basement ceilings got wires going all over the place that I have no idea what they're for. I just. Do you know where the holes are? Yes. Because I, I mean, depending on your situation, there are low voltage wiring companies that can can do that. Like we hired for my dad that came and helped him figure it out. <laughs> or your company can come and do some wiring, but right now they don't want to go in the walls so much. But guys who are, you know, women who run cables, there are people that know how to do it. You just have to find you know, who... Well, like I said, there's cables already going all through, all over the place, but they're all disconnected. So I'm wondering if that's going to be an easy deal. I'm sure lots of people are on this call or the, or watching this in the future are going to be like, because right now I'm like, like, like I made this put in the chat, I'm going to get a Mickey Mouse wind-up clock. So I use my cell phone as my alarm. Right. But that's the first step is cleaning out your bedroom is what I tell people is start with your bedroom get all the wireless devices out or turn them off. Don't have electrical cords, definitely. Yeah, don't I don't even have a TV in my bedroom, but I did have a cell phone, so I gotta get that out, yeah. Yeah, very important. There's some really, so you can call a low voltage wiring company. I, a low voltage, at least I found a company near me and that was how he described himself and he does telephone lines and uh, cables. Okay. Um, there are a lot of people who know how, who you know, used to work for telecom and they, they work for uh, electricians can do it as well. Um, it's good if you have a building biologist or an expert in remediation to be helping guide some of the process because of electromagnetic interference, which is a whole other issue. And if you run wires and they're not shielded and there's, it gets more complicated. It's definitely doable because I've done it, but I would take it step by step. Um, and if you can get professional help, but get educated so that you can take each step and make changes. So do you have a video based on just that? On like, uh, you, you mentioned, right, what to do in your house? I do have how to reduce EMF as a, um, and there's many, I would recommend also the building, the Institute of Building Biology. They have videos that you can watch explaining steps you can do too. I have a couple of videos. One is practical ways to reduce exposure to cell phone radiation. This was from a 5G, um, I don't want to play it, so I'm just stopping it. Um, the Michigan 5G Forum, State House Forum, which is really a good resource. If you're interested in 5G, we had an all-day symposium with Senator Colbeck and Frank Clegg, uh, former Microsoft Canada president, uh, talking as well. Um, and okay. Yeah, I've got... Yeah. All those reports, we have pages of um, fact sheets. If you sign up with Environmental Health Trust for our newsletter, um, we link to all of that, those resources as well. 
or you can contact us and I can point you in the right direction. Great. Well, thank you for going over time. It's 6.11 now. We went a little bit over. Was there anybody else that had a burning, like, I have to ask this question real quick before we, we sign off? Or can, you go to, can we go to her um, resources and check out Environmental Health Trust, right? I just went and subscribed to your YouTube channel. I suggest everybody else do that. Yeah, that's okay. a great idea. Yeah, and so share it with your friends and family. Have these conversations. Go talk with your neighbors. Download the, the letter from 5G Crisis, or maybe there's one on Environmental Health Trust, too, and talk with your neighbors. Because if you don't talk to your neighbors about this, you cannot complain if they get a cell tower installed on their house. Like, really, it's we have to take personal responsibility for what's happening here. And um, we, need, we need to make sure uh, that we are all taking action to protect not only our health and our children's health, but the health of our community. Because this is an onslaught, which cannot, you cannot really protect yourself from once it's installed. There's really not, I mean, there's some things you can do in your home, but it, like she said, like Theodora said, once you go outside, there it is. Once you're walking your dog, once you're playing in the park outside, you, you, even sitting on your front porch, right? There's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be problems. So. There's some great flyers and fact sheets here on the Environmental Health Trust. And I know it looks a little overwhelming, but I would just say pick one and print out one mm -hmm. and to go to, you know, just, like for me, I just went just to my neighbors first. I also did call my, my, I mean, I emailed my city to find out the locations. And so I have to ask more, I've learned from this call, we need to ask more questions about, do you have an ordinance for the wireless um, uh, facilities installation, right? And take a look at that. And then also to recap a little bit on what to do, you, we want to make sure you either start or join a local Stop 5G um, Facebook page or you know Instagram group or whatever, uh, a meetup group, whatever it is you can, and coordinate and organize with other people. Really, really important thing to do. And as you're doing this, please be nice when you talk to your city council members and your planners. If you come at them like some angry, crazy, emotional person, they will not listen to you. They will just dig in their heels and get more angry and more upset and act like you don't know what you're talking about. The, the more angry and upset that you are about this, the more it discredits you and it more that it built, they build up a wall, right? The more you, what you resist persists. So we really encourage you to, um, you know, oh, great. And here's a great list. Do's and don'ts for safe technology. Yeah. So great checklist. Start off here. Do, you know, one a weekend or one every other day, whatever it is that you can do. Um, don't get overwhelmed about this. I had somebody say to me on the last call that they were really overwhelmed. Here's the thing. Being in overwhelm does not help you or the situation or your families or friends. I get that it can be overwhelming, but after the first impact of learning like what it is that we need to do, um, being overwhelmed and shutting down is like, really, it can turn into kind of a cop out. Like, oh, I'm not going to do anything about it because I'm overwhelmed. Well, if everybody did that, then, you know, we're really, we're pretty much screwed, right? They're going to install this everywhere. And it's just, it's really going to impact our health in a really um, a massive way. We've got the satellites also to worry about. Um, but if we raise awareness, if we say, okay, this is overwhelmed, this is a big job, but I'm going to do one thing at a time. And um, I'm, first, I'm going to contact my city. Next, I'm going to you know, talk to my neighbors. I'm going to join a group, right? I'm going to print out some, some letters. And on the weekends, when I walk, really, you can walk the dog and pass these out to your neighbors, put it under their doormat. It's not hard. You don't need to know anything about 5G in order to do that. You just print out the letters and, um, you know, and do that. So um, is there one thing you want us to see, Theodore, or can you stop sharing? I was trying to get it up, and I couldn't figure out I can't find my cursor, but I wanted to show you the do's and don'ts for safe technology is a good start. Right. Okay. It's a journey. And we also have under educate yourself, we have like examples of, you know, parents talking about things that they've done and take it one step at a time in your home, like starting out learning about your cell phone, figuring out your bedroom first and go from there. You know, this is just like any other environmental issue. We have the same big corporations working. It is everywhere, just like air pollution or bad food. Um, but we can really fix this by, by talking about it and working on this issue. And I can tell you this, our elected officials, they need courage 
and the political that you will help them with the political will by having all the bodies in the room by packing the room yes. got to pack the room get the numbers they so, have to see that it's important yeah and then and there's there's so much not to love about 5g that it's this isn't just about the radiation where there's the it's ugly property devaluation when it goes up in your yard um the privacy issues people concerned about the overuse of screens and and the e-waste i mean there are just so many oh and then the uh energy consumption of all of these new devices all of these new cell towers the shift report we have a page uh a two-pager on the impact on climate change and, and energy use uh, which alone impacts to birds and bees. There's so many reasons. Um, and everyone can come in and talk about all of these things. And look, we should really look at this before we roll it out. We should be critically looking at this instead of just why, you know, just, just. Yeah. Open the and there is a, there's a clip. I don't know if you have it on your website, but there's a clip where in a Senate hearing, one of the manufacturer's representatives, probably a lobbyist, admits that there have been no safety studies on 5G. Do you remember seeing that clip, Theodore? Yes, I clipped that. That is, yes. that is Senator Blumenthal at a hearing right. um, asking the telecom if uh, have, when are the safety studies have been done. And they ha aren't funding any safety studies on 5G. And as he says, we're flying blind on health and safety. And we really are because there was no pre-market safety testing for long-term exposure to cell phones or wireless before it came out years ago. It, it, it wasn't just like everything else, the chemicals and products and, and lotions and then food, chemicals we're putting in foods and pesticides. It, it's the right. same story. Um, and who would have thought we would be using this much this much devices. I mean, 10 years ago, I never thought we'd be where we are now. It used to be just the phone, but here we are. There's actually a whole section. I should show you some of these resources. So under um, 5G, there is a whole section with letters from Congress to the FCC. And these are elected officials. Here's Blumenthal who you were talking about, who was asking about in the video of Senator Blumenthal talking about safety. But we also have letters from members of Congress requesting safety information. And this is useful to share, to show that this is happening and elected officials are speaking out about so you this. You could attach this and send it to your representative or Senator as an example of, of that, other, rep other senators are concerned about this, and I want you to be concerned about this too. Have you asked about this? What are you doing about this, right? Exactly. Okay. We Great. also have a whole section on um, scientist letters here, which has first the scientific appeals. There have been many appeals, the international appeal, appeals, there was just the German doctor's appeal, um, hundreds of doctors, and then if you scroll down, we have letters from Every time there's a, you know, like the California law, scientists will write letters. This is um, letters to, um, oh, this is to Gern, to, um, which one is, the, these are new. We just added these letters actually. So every time scientists are writing letters, this is an open letter, which you can use. Um, and we just have actually dozens and dozens, whoops. I don't know why I can't scroll up and get it down. I'm having a little challenge here. If I just move it like that. Okay. Okay. So while you're trying to figure that out, I just want to mention that I saw the Wi-Fi in schools thing. And I don't know if there's anybody else on here in California, but there's a, there is a, um, can you stop sharing while you, while you, oh, stuff? it's just a little things. Okay. Sorry. So um, if you, if you're, if you have any bills coming up that talk about improving technology in schools or, edu you know, just improving the budget for schools, I, I'm going to do this and I hope you to do too. Make sure to ask, is that money, like in California, it's $500 million or something like that for technology in schools. Does that mean 
5G being installed outside of schools? Is that what they want? Do they want more Wi-Fi, right, in the schools? What is that money for? That could easily be something where, like when there's money being raised for, you know, for the environment, right, and for conservation, often a lot of that money is for Roundup to be sprayed around utilities and waterways and forestry, right? They're using it for things that are toxic. So you, you really have to ask before you vote for a bill, what, where is that money going and what is it for? And I don't know if you guys have stuff like this, but I go to a very progressive church and they actually have like meetings after services where these committees get together and they've asked questions and they found this out and they all discuss it. And then they, they have one side that's for or one side that's against. And they say, you know, they, they unearth what, right. The, the reasons why. So I really encourage you to ask if there's money coming up in a bill um, for what, what is that money going for? Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, Frankie says there's studies coming out showing how this tech is counterproductive for learning in schools. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's absolutely been proven that if you write things down and take notes, you learn it much faster than typing up notes. Your brain is more selective and you learn it more quickly. So, um, Eileen is saying manhattanneighbors.org is a great website too. So, uh, that's just something that she's suggested. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I just, I want to wrap it up because it's, it's gone on much longer than we expected, but wasn't this useful information, everybody? Yes. I just, I just ordered a black cord, corded phone. Oh, <laughs> you did? <laughs> Great. <laughs> with the curly cords. So, yeah, now, now I got to order the one with a really long cord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, see, if we did things the way grandma did it, we'd all be fine, right? <laughs> I know I'm 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 sitting here thinking of all those phones I gave away to Goodwill. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, we're gonna be going go back to yard sales, folks. No, no, but I, in some some places in California you can't get a landline anymore. There's so. a whole lawsuit on that because what we've actually been paying every ta every person who's had a landline phone for decades has been paying money towards maintaining those landlines, and the companies did a bait and switch. And they're using it for 5G and wireless. And there's a whole court case on that because we've been duped. Right. Well, yeah. I have We're the, not going to be our own lines. I have the same thing as you, Theodora. And I have the, I got, I got a free phone when I signed up for my Spectrum internet. But I don't, I never needed it. Why do I need a phone? So now I ordered one because it's plug, it's going to pl plug right into my modem. Right. Right. And then, yes. So and is that safer then, plugging direct, the phone directly into the modem? Yeah, because with the curly cord. Yes, okay. With the you want to also, if you can turn the antennas off of your modem, like with Verizon in our area, we actually can go in if the computer is connected by Ethernet and turn the antenna off or turn it off at night um, as a first step. Yeah, turning off at night. Okay, well, a lot of great tips and information here. I, I'm going to, I think, go through my notes and um, just say a few of the takeaways from the call, or maybe I'll just find them on your website. I don't know. But I'd like to, I'd like to make sure that our supporters have access to this. And I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you, you Theodora, and um, also Ryan for being on the call and for all of our supporters all across the country. And um, let's see, I'm trying to get out of here. I don't know why. I'm I, think we, I think we should do a lot, uh, several more of these calls. Okay, yes, I, I think one of our biggest supporters today said, Zen, you guys have made a huge difference in the world of GMOs and pesticides. That's, it's on its way, right? Glyphosate is on its way out. The, the, the uh, trials have happened. Yes, we're not gonna give up, of course, and we want glyphosate banned. But I think that we need to devote some attention on 5G, don't you? Yes, I mean, didn't I say earlier to you, two of you, I said the train has left the station, it's gaining speed. Yes, as far as glyphosate. Yeah. The pesticide. So. And, and we've even seen in agriculture articles, they said they are now in a post chemical, you know, like they know they are, they need to move away from chemicals. Uh, so, hallelujah, you know, it's a new era, we, but we now also need to really focus on making sure that 5G does not um, really intrude upon our, our neighborhoods and wreak havoc on our health, our privacy. It's another, our it's another invisible threat. Yeah, and our and our real estate values. She was saying we don't want. Yeah. To, you know, I mean, who's going to want to? If you want to move, who's going to buy a house with a five G tower right outside of it? How are you going to move? That's right. Not people who have a house in our area. It, not only 
that, and this is something to share with people, they're going, there's so little like um, organization in place in your local, in the government to enforce the laws that we even have. So for example, these small cells are sometimes going up not where the application process was. So we have a 63 foot um, small cell installation that was put on a woman, right in front of a woman's house several years ago. And uh, she can't even get it down because everyone says that's not my job. And it was, I forgot to mention, it was permitted down the road, oh. but it ended up in front of her house. So we have a group of sophisticated, we've been working on this for a few years, and they review all the applications for people, activists and uh, people in the community. And we found over a dozen uh, installations that don't match what the permit was for. Right, so you would think that you would be able to get those removed, but you're saying that people are even having challenges with that. There's no monitoring. There's not. There's no monitoring the radiation, but there's not even monitoring that it's following what the permit was for, like in terms of the size and the shape and the place. And one of the things that we are talking to policymakers about is, do you have uh, you know, people whose job it is to enforce and make sure it's in the right place? How much time are you devoting to reviewing the permitting? We have a rubber stamp situation here where there's something called the Tower Committee and they get all of these applications and everything is just yes, yes, yes. There isn't actually the deep review that really needs to happen. And right. then if there's a- It takes a lot of time and money and they don't want to think about that. They just want to improve it and maybe get a donation from Verizon or whatever for their city and, and move on their way, Mary, you know, merry way with that. Yeah, so if you watch some of our, our talks, um, the one we just did, I've just done a couple talks, the University of California, San Francisco talk with Dr. Deborah Davis and myself. I think I show the picture of this particular house, you know, asking your elected officials, well, if there's a problem with how they put it up or the permitting, who, whose job is it to enforce it and to take right. it down and make sure it moves? She still has that equipment up. It's been years. She testifies. All, all right, guys, so we've got to stop it before it comes in. This is, you've got to take action now and we've got to, we've got to um, motivate and connect and organize in our communities. This is very important. Please go to the Environmental Health Trust. Uh, uh, it's ehtrust.org and find more information. Go to 5gcrisis.org. Um, EMF Harmony has some great resources as well. So please do um, check them out. And thank you very much for being on tonight. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Theodora. Thank, thank you. you. And sign up for our newsletter. And sign up for the newsletter, yes. yes. Thank you so much. Take care.